Hey, what's up, Scott Balkum here, and I'm with Kessler Crane today, and in five minutes, I'm gonna show you how to unlock the pure power contained within your Kessler City Shooter or your second shooter system, all through the power of Kessler Chaos. So this is gonna be a really quick and honestly very simple dive into the Kessler Chaos system, and it's gonna unlock the power that you've been, well, dreaming of. And you can run this on iPad OS, you can run this on Mac OS, or you can run this on Windows. That choice is up to you. There are two options. There is the basic version, which allows you up to three keyframes per access, and then there is the premium version for a small fee that gets you 20 keyframes per access, and that's where the fun comes in. But the first thing we wanna do is connect your laptop or iPad to your Kessler Cine Shooter or Second Shooter Pro with Wi-Fi. Then once you're connected, launch the Chaos application, and you'll know that you've connected when it says initializing, and then down here on the bottom, it says, how many axes you have live. Uh, right now, I just have the pan and tilt on here just for simplicity and speed, but we will get going here. So you have your pan, you can see it's enabled, your tilt down here is enabled. So this may look complicated, but it's actually very intuitive and pretty easy. And you'll be like, oh, okay. The vertical axis is just your motor position relative to your calibrated start and end points. The horizontal, it's just time. So we're just plotting keyframes based on motor position and time and then having just a little bit of fun with it. But the first thing we wanna do is set those calibration limits. We click on pan, and then we're going to use this little slider right here in the middle, and we're gonna move it all the way, one direction that is safe, and then you're gonna click mark begin. Now you're gonna move it all the way to the other direction, as far as you need to go, or as far as you can safely go is what you wanna do. Click mark end. That is now done. Now you can just click here in the middle. Now this entire movement from this point to this point is now on this simple bar all the way across. So if I move it here, it goes there. If I move it here, it goes there. If I move it here, it goes right back to the middle. We need to do the same thing to the tilt axis. Now we're going to carefully go down because I don't want to slam my lens into there. That's good enough. We'll mark begin. And then we're going to go up that's good right there, and we will mark end. So let's get our first move going in, where we have right up here, we're at the very beginning, so let's take our pan, and we're just gonna move it, well, let's move it over here, and let's take our tilt, and let's move it right over here. And then we're gonna go down here and click keyframe, and you can see there are two keyframes on here. Now let's advance, let's do something you can't do in just the app or the standalone version. Instead of equally distant keyframes, let's put one about one third of the way in. So let's take the tilt and we're gonna go about halfway. We'll take the pan and we'll go about halfway. Now we can record a keyframe and then let's go all the way to the end here. And then the pan, we're just gonna continue all the way around. And then the tilt, um, let's go back up. Let's, uh, let's, let's have a little fun here. Let's live on the edge. So let's record a keyframe. Now, what you see here is a graph, and this shows the axis that is selected down here is blue. If I just click here, you can see there. So if you look here, we can't actually move these at all, but if we click on graph and uncheck the lock all keyframes, or we could uncheck vertical or horizontal, now we can take this keyframe and move it anywhere we want. Oh, but wait, there's more. If you double click on it, look, a pair of handles show up. And what can we do with these? Oh, we can adjust our curves however we want. If you wanna go up here and change under graph cusp handles, you can do that too. And that will allow you real access to your curves. Well, unlike anything that you've had before. You can do this with any one of these. Just simply double click on the axis, take it out, right about there. And we like that, so yeah, let's uh, go pick here, take off the cusp handles. Um, now, here's an interesting thing. So we have this move, and if we load it up right now, we click on it, we can see the minimum move time right here is six seconds. So let's go ahead and set it to, well, six seconds. There's also another option down here for delay. 
If you click on that, you'll see yeah, there's a two second delay, which means it will start in two seconds. We will go to click load. It's gonna zoom all the way back to its start position. And then it's ready to go. All we do is press go. You see it counts down on the screen two seconds and boom, it's going to do its first move and now it's gonna move its second move. It's gonna do exactly what you program in. Now let's say we wanna do something fun like delete an entire axis or delete a keyframe or move that keyframe just a little bit by just nudging it. Hold down your mouse button on the selected keyframe on the axis that is selected it below and now you can see we have the option to delete the axis, delete all axis, delete the keyframe. We can move to the next keyframes. We can also go up and down just by small increments. But we're gonna delete this keyframe. Now we have one long pan that's gonna take place without stopping and then we have a tilt in the middle. Let's go ahead and load what this is gonna look like. Okay, now let's go. Notice the pan never stopped moving, but the tilt ran its multiple moves. But now, do we have an extra speed? Notice we gained one second in that performance. So let's go down and change it to five seconds. But wait, let's go here, double click, and let's ramp this bad boy up. By ramping, you can get a little more speed. Let's see what we get now. Minimum move time, three seconds. Yup. Let's change that to three. And now, click load and go to one. And now you're cooking with gas. So there's a lot of things you can do quickly and efficiently in here. Now we can also improve this speed here. Let's take this axis, tilt, move it over to here. Let's elongate this keyframe. Take this one. This will help it speed up. And let's see, did that help it get any extra speed? Yes, it did. Now we have a two second move. All of that by quick little tweaks. Click load. And now go. It's going to run really fast now. You can also do a scrub in here. If you click on scrub, you can actually move this through in time, just let it go. And it's going to take it to wherever that spot is on your timeline. So it allows you to go to this keyframe and you can see what's going on. Uh, it's very simple, it's very fast. So as you can see, it's actually very easy to set up very complicated moves all using the power and the simplicity of the Chaos system. And we'll be doing a full tutorial unlocking all the live motion, time-lapse events, stop motion, multi-lapse, and gigapixel, and even more. All of those powers that exist inside this just won't fit in five minutes. Gosh, I hope that was five minutes. So if you have any questions along the way or you need some help, go over to KesslerCrane.com. The support section is full of a lot of information. There's a lot of tutorial videos. There's a frequently asked questions. You can submit a trouble ticket. You can talk to a live human. There's a lot of ways that you can get help on your Kessler City Shooter, Second Shooter, or any other Kessler product that you have. Those folks over there are fantastic and they can't wait to help you. They also can't wait to see what you do with the power of chaos.